resistance, uh, as I say, hey, these are my favorite indicators. I preach it to everybody I talk to at work or, you know, whatever I need at the, uh, whatever I'm doing, honestly, because I know probably like most people here that love trading coins and love trading stocks, they're going to strike up a conversation with somebody um, when they hear somebody mention one of those. So these are my favorite indicators and probably, you know, other than volume, of course, what I use more than any other indicator. Um, so I kind of touched on it before when we were talking about candles, but you want to focus on the body of the candle when applying these, um, and we'll get into that. So as we see here, we try to make this go completely over to where support and resistance is being represented here, but it's also, as you can see in the support here, initially, it can also inversely, like I was saying, everything has an inverse it also becomes um, resistance, right? So that's pretty cool. That's really something neat to look at. Now, if you're day trading, you can really just jock this uh, support and resistance, um, you know, waiting for something to break out, waiting for something to break down if you're shorting it. But uh, pretty cool going on here. Um, so you can see what is support, what is resistance, right? Um, you can see there's support here. What is this price? 29.7. What are we looking at? ETC just a few days ago, it looks like. So there comes down, and this means that traders are more or less, of course, there's the wicks, right? But more or less agreeing that they're not willing to pay anything less than $29.70 for this. So the price is going to stop here. And, you know, sometimes it's not going to be perfect, you know, it's a little bit coming down here, but you can see that more or less it's bouncing here, it's bouncing here. People are just, you know, for these instances in time, they're not willing to pay anything less for that. But on the reverse side, right, they're not willing to pay anything more than whatever this is, $32 up here. So then essentially what's happening is your stock price or your crypto price is bouncing off support, bouncing back down off resistance. So then that leads you right into something that is consolidating, right? So now this coin, classic, is consolidating right here. So that just means it's bouncing off your support, bouncing off your resistance. People aren't wanting to pay anything less for it. People aren't wanting to pay anything more for it. And it just keeps on getting down. And then once it finally breaks, as we see here, it, you know, it stays under for a while, but then I mean, honestly, I think it sounds silly, but it's pretty beautiful how it works that this was previous support. Now it's the same resistance here. So that's one of the reasons I, you know, gave this chart and it's a recent example, but this was support and now it's resistance. Now they don't want to pay any, any more than this, you know, for this time period. And of course, you know, it changes and it depends all what time frames you're looking at um, because you get quite different support and resistance because um, as you see here, this is only two total days here and 30 minutes. So each candlestick here is 30 minutes. And if you go to two hours, then all these will change to two hours, you're gonna see a little bit different, right? So when you're analyzing charts, you have to look at different time periods. You, you just got to, you can't make a trade off of a, off of a single time period, no matter what you're doing. I mean, it, it behooves you to wanna look at some different stuff there. Um, <clears throat> So I've read this a few different places and I kind of wrote it down here so I wouldn't miss it, but I would always recommend, and me personally, I never buy within a consolidation period whatsoever. So like we were saying, this is the consolidation period, right? So I'm not going to buy a stock or a coin in this period right here because essentially I don't know which way the price movement is going to drive this or the, you know, the price action is going to drive this. I don't know if it's going to break out which means a breakout is essentially, not essentially, it's literally when the stock price breaks out of this resistance and it continues uh, north, right? As opposed to a breakdown right here, breaks that support and it goes uh, bearish for that instance. So you have a consolidation period. You don't want to buy right here because hell, if you bought right here, you're like, oh man, you know, this is an uptrend, this is good. I'm going to buy right here. Oh man, breakout. It's, it's not a breakout. Don't be fooled. You know, look at your lines, 
go in there because this is bouncing off resistance, really strong resistance that's coming down and actually it's, it's bouncing off so hard that it is, it's breaking your uh, support right here, right? So don't buy in consolidations period. If you were going to, um, you're going to trade this on a, on a bullish run. I wouldn't, in this, we're looking at two days here. I wouldn't trade anything going on here. Unless perchance this um, support line here was a little bit longer to the left, right? Hold on, let me get my marker here. If this support line was a little bit longer to the left and, you know, I had the 24 hours to the left of us on the screen, I would imagine that this was probably underneath this support line the entire time. So you're going to be watching and watching. You're going to be patient, right? Because all traders are patient. It's really hard to be patient, especially with these fast movers. But you're going to be patient, and you're not going to buy down here. You're not going to buy under consolidation. And as soon as it breaks out up here, you're going to buy. So you could have, again, a, um, a limit buy set at around, what is this, 30.3 right here, and you would buy. And then of course, you know, you'd be in the green right now. And yeah, it's gonna pull back a little bit, but it eventually went up. I think we, I'm pretty sure B or ETC, I'm sorry, ETC went up to 40. So if you're day trading that, you could have hit it from 30 to $40, which is incredible move. That's about 33%. So that would be a great day trade. Um, so that's something to consider. And I, I would never, there's so much volatility in stocks and crypto, right? So if you bought here and, you know, it broke back down, you know, a lot of people get upset, but you can't be upset because it eventually went up. So a lot of times when things break out, you have to know this, that when things break out, the more than likely going to pull back down and then they'll go back up again. So you can buy on the breakout and it's probably going to, the price is probably going to get dro driven back down. And then it gives you another opportunity to buy in again, or if you miss the breakout to buy in again, and then more than likely it'll go up, um, Obviously, that doesn't always happen, but it's a good indicator. Let's see what JJ said. What do you use to draw on the charts to see the support and resistance more clearly when making trades? So um, on crypto, this is a hard, hard one for me to answer right now. I haven't found uh, an exchange or a website that I've really liked on crypto, but I believe in Crypto Island there was somebody that was posting about it. Um, please post the link if you're one of those guys right now. Um, so that we can all see. So I don't use anything for um, support and resistance or for any kind of drawing on coins right now. I, I, I do it in my head. And a lot of these things, I've just seen it for so long. I can just, I can see the support. I can see the resistance. And I try to do it in my head. And then, of course, you know, when you, we, we're going to get into simple moving averages and some bolder bands, those things kind of help um, round some things off or line some things off depending on what you're looking at. Um, but as far as stocks go, um, I have the page at the very end of all these slides, but as far as stocks go, there's the uh, stock, it's literally called like a stock, stock app. Um, just remind me when we get to the end of the slides, I'll give you it, but it's a stock app, it's online, um, and you can draw literally whatever indicator you want. It's, it's really good. And I actually think JJ, I showed you in person uh, that one, so it's the same exact one but hopefully we can look into the uh, crypto one and we can probably get a good answer on that. If not, I'll do some digging after this and I'll, I'll shoot it to you and I'll post it in the comments after I find it because this video will be up after we finish the live version. Um, so support resistance, um, let's see here. Yeah, so we pretty much covered everything that, that I use, and I guarantee you, you, you Wikipedia or whatever, you know, or you ask your friend, they'll probably know a little bit more for each thing that I'm going over, but as far as, you know, as I trading with uh, TA, this is as much as I use it, um, and it's just practice, 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 uh, just looking at charts over and over again. Um, I, I just, I like looking at charts, I don't mind looking at it, it's fun to try to figure out support and resistance. And when actually you see it uh, happen in real time, it's pretty cool to see prices bouncing off and between and consolidating and then being able to apply it. But obviously, like every indicator that we're going over here, it is incredibly easy to talk about, but it's so hard to apply in real time. I know any day trader, any kind of trader, um, probably that uses this, it's, it's incredibly hard to use. So 
uh, take it as you will. Um, so we have horizontal trend lines essentially here, right? Support and resistance. Then we're going to go over actual um, trend lines. So trend line is, let's see, yeah, perm comes up, stole this from the internet, perfect. All right, so we have a trend line support, right? So this is a bullish run right here. We have a trend line going that at the same time, you guys remember here where we have support and resistance, right? Bouncing off at 29 for support, bouncing up at 32 for resistance. You can see the exact same thing here on a trend line, right? So of course you're not gonna have the same exact um, price, but you can clearly, I mean pretty darn clearly see, at least you know in hindsight, that there was a support here as it bounced up. And you know if you're trading bullishly, right, if you're trading uh, in favor of that stock or coin price, then this is something you wanna see. And this begs uh, another one, we have a low down here, right? And almost, I'm not really going over it in this video, but this is like a double bottom. Oh my God, that is a huge circle. Um, I meant to do the small ones here, but my mouse on the wireless stuff is going crazy. But there's a double bottom down here, right? So support, support, and then this thing takes off, right? So then you have higher support and higher support and higher support. So you want to be looking at what they say as in uh, higher lows, right? So you have, a, you have a higher low here, a higher low here, higher low here, and here, near here, here. And then where these green lines are, you can clearly see that there's... Uh, a higher high. So bullish, you always want to be looking for higher highs and higher lows. So I think that is pretty uh, good representation there. But if we look to the left of the chart here, you can also see that there's lower lows and lower highs. And that's something, man, this mouse is terrible. So just uh, please, just look on the left, I'm not going to draw this thing's freaking out. But there's lower lows and there's higher um, lower highs as well right so it's clear to see that's a, a real bearish trend